Houses of Worship and faith-based nonprofits are a bedrock of many Chicago communities. And through a partnership with Chicago Public Schools, they provided valuable resources for students, even during the pandemic. To learn more about Chicago Public Schools Office of Faith-Based Initiatives, we welcome its director, Alan Conley. We also welcome Earl Granberry, Community Coordinator at Chicago Public Schools. Alan, tell us a little bit about the CPS's faith-based initiatives and how did it get started? Well, so the program started uh, nearly 15 years ago now uh, when the violence in Chicago began to spike. And people were looking for ways that they could curtail the violence and perhaps provide safe havens for young people. So the Office of Faith-Based Initiatives uh, initially started with a program that still runs to this day called the Safe Haven Program. So it's really bridging the gaps between Chicago public schools and the faith-based communities of Chicago. Yes, absolutely. Uh, oftentimes there are these gaps that exist because uh, many people in the faith community, they don't realize that the faith community plays an intricate part in uh, connecting to Chicago public schools, uh, mainly because uh, you know, you know, over the years, there's been a lot of talk about prayer not being in the schools, which uh, that's one of the things that my colleague and myself, we uh, often hear from our constituents. They're, they're usually asking us, uh, are you, you all bringing prayer back into the schools? And we have to let them know, no, that's not our mission. Our mission is not to bring prayer back into the schools. In fact, uh, I always tell them that as long as tests are still being given out in our school systems, those young people are still praying. So prayer is really still in the schools, but our office uh, really exists to help bridge those gaps, to let the faith community know that they can indeed play a part in supporting the schools and the young people in those, in those communities where they serve. And Earl, who are the churches and faith groups that you're partnering with and, and how did you develop these partnerships? It's a great question. The churches span all over the city. Um, first one, the Safe Haven Program began to kind of engage in this process, we started once ago with what we call focused communities within the district. So focus communities, those communities that have um, students as well as families that don't have a greater opportunity to provide the resources that we provide. So what we do is that based off of those focuses, com those focus communities, we go from other areas of the city to provide that additional support. We primarily focus on communities such as Austin, such as Garfield Park, Roseland, Bronzeville, Greater, uh, Greater Crossing, and other areas in the city that have those focuses that they need that additional support. And then not only that, we partner, we partner up with other faith-based and interfaith organizations as well, from the Baha'i faith to the Muslim faith to other faith organizations that help collaborate to provide these opportunities not only for our district, but for our students and our families. So our reach is really broad. We're trying to engage it more throughout the time that me and Alan is on the team together, and we hope to extend it as long as we're here. Um, and Alan, tell us a little bit more about the Safe Haven program. Safe Haven uh, typically runs as a, an after school program, uh, a spring break program and summer. So there's three parts to this program. Uh, after school runs uh, when, when the children are let out, uh, they have a safe place to go. They get a free meal. Uh, they engage in social emotional learning activities. Uh, we've also incorporated STEM activities. And, but most importantly, they're loved on by people in the community who sometimes they know or their parents know and so they feel comfortable uh, with their children going to those sites uh, during spring break when when school is out uh, unfortunately sometimes the, the violence goes up and so parents are looking for somewhere for their young people to be during the day maybe while they're at work while they're uh, maybe they're at home trying to get some chores done around the house and they just need a safe place for their young people to go and so uh, we operate for one week during spring break, uh, four hours a day, uh, I, I should add. And then for uh, after school is three hours a day. And then over the summer, it, it operates for six weeks at uh, four hours a day. And uh, that's when they get to have fun. Uh, the young people, they, they engage in those same uh, STEM activities and social emotional learning activities. Um, but they also get a chance to go on field trips. And uh, we did last summer. Um, because we could not uh, engage in in-person learning or in-person uh, activities, uh, we did have a what we call a safe haven virtual village. And so they were able to engage in a virtual space, uh, which we are now. So uh, remote learning, 
uh, re remote learning it, it, in the pandemic, it caused us to uh, operate in creative ways that we didn't think about uh, prior to the pandemic. Is there also a program that helps uh, like a safe walk passage or safe passage program to help children walk to school and, and back home? Mm -hmm, absolutely. So that doesn't fall under our department, but under uh, the Department of Safety and Security, uh, they, they have what's called safe passage. And uh, many of the safe passage sites uh, are faith based. And so many of the young people, when they go to these safe havens, they may cross paths with that safe passage worker who they know from church uh, or they just know from the community. So yes, uh, the safe passage program is a part of the uh, uh, safety and security department in Chicago Public Schools. That's great. And Earl, can you talk about any um, other initiatives that you're working on? I read something about a church adopt a school or crisis training. Absolutely. So outside of the Safe Haven program, we actually uh, are able to engage and uh, we instruct and facilitate two other programs. One is the Adopt a School Initiative. So if a, by, by chance a faith-based organization or a community-based organization maybe doesn't have the capacity to be a Safe Haven program, they do great work in the community, but the landscape of them being able to provide that comprehensive work to all those students and those families in the area has not been fully developed. We have what we call an Adopt a School initiative where that organization can actually adopt one school in their community within their neighborhood to provide service projects different initiatives and different things that the schools in that community maybe don't have for example um, we had a couple partners who actually provided um, boxes of meals um, during the pandemic where uh, a lot of churches throughout the community one being uh, Alan's one of his ministries as well provided um, meals and fam and meals and boxes of uh, fresh produce to um, our families and communities in those focused communities in the midst of COVID. Or for example, we have a couple of our adopted school initiatives that provide online tutoring and in-person tutoring when it's, a, when it's feasible to students that need the extra bit of a help, extra bit of help in math or in reading or in science. So they just adopt one school to provide this service to. And through that process, they develop an ongoing relationship with the school so that that partnership with the actual faith-based or community-based organization and the school grows into develop and it becomes a part of just that ongoing process of providing holistic care for our um, students and our, for our families. And then what we also do is what we call crisis support. We know unfortunately because of the world that we live in and also we live in this city, um, we are not free from the tragedies and hardships that the city has within our community and within our district. So unfortunately, um, because of those, um, those systemic problems, those issues, um, we have students that pass away, whether it be traumatic or for natural causes. So what do we do in the midst of that situation? What do we do in the midst of those circumstances? Well, through the crisis support team that CPS has, we partner with them to provide not only financial assistance, but support as well. In partnership, in partnership with providing information from the state's attorney office to those particular families and those other social and emotional needs that maybe those families need during that crisis time. So those are the two programs that we provide. And we also partner with district-wide initiatives. Me and Alan are constantly um, being asked by the district to do different things for our faith-based partners and our communities. And we're just there to support and serve our families and our caregivers that need that, um, need that extra bit of push and encouragement during those, uh, during those very, very trying times in their life. Some people might worry about some of these programs that they're violating the separation of church and state. How would you respond to those questions? Well, we are the Office of Faith-Based Initiatives. It doesn't mean that we're promoting faith. So according to the U.S. Department of Education, we can indeed promote faith-based uh, activities as long as they are secular at its core. And so our, our faith partners, they understand that this is not an opportunity if you subscribe to the Christian faith uh, to proselytize and to say, hey, we want you to accept uh, uh, Jesus as your personal savior. Uh, that is not acceptable. But what we do is allow young people, if they want to pray, if they want to lead a prayer, um, we cannot prohibit uh, them from doing so. Uh, they can do so as long as it's student led. Um, but what we do is we promote the partnership, uh, not, so ne not necessarily uh, the faith itself. How can other faith organizations get involved and help you out? Well, I think one way is that um, me and Alan are available. Um, we have, if you want to email us at faithbase at cps.edu, 
um, that's one way to get connected with us. We also, one area that we're promoting now is actually our faith leaders meetings that we have twice a month. In those particular meetings, we provide updates and insight on district initiatives, different, um, different activities, as well as different information that we need that the faith-based community needs to know and it gives an opportunity to engage with us on that level as well you can also reach out to me or alan um, we can provide that additional information as needed to let us to let you guys know how you can either be adopt a school initiative or a faith-based partner or just if you by chance want to connect and be informed of the things that we're doing and how we're wanting to spread our reach and spread our uh, community amongst faith-based leaders around the city and also i want to add uh, to that earl thank you so much earl um but um check out cpsparentu.org. That's the website where you can even see uh, some of the work that we're doing. Uh, we fall under another umbrella called the Family and Community Engagement Department. And Anne, I, I would like to say this, um, you know, there are many of our faculty members, our, our families and students within CPS uh, that get their core values from a particular faith. And so this is one of the reasons why we try to connect with the faith community, because if you connect with someone that uh, is, is connected to a faith that means something to them, that goes a long way. It lets them know that you're looking uh, at the core. Our, our CEO, Dr. Janice Jackson, uh, she's concerned about the whole child. She, there's a holistic approach that we take to the work that we do. As Earl mentioned, the food giveaways, uh, so, some of those things you wouldn't think uh, would be taking place within Chicago public schools, but because we have a leader that uh, leads with uh, both head and heart, uh, we are empathetic to the needs of our community. And so we're always trying to meet those needs. The academic uh, progress usually is a, a direct correlation uh, or uh, result of the academic experience. So all of these things that we do is to just help aid the academic experience so that young person can have something to remember uh, that is positive regarding their education experience while they are in uh, Chicago public schools. Wonderful. Can you think of a specific example, maybe one student who, you know, life was impacted or changed by these programs? Sure, uh, there's so many, but uh, there, there's one school in particular in the Bronzeville community uh, that's a part of our adopt a school initiative. And um, uh, Earl was influential with working with that partnership because he manages uh, the partnership between Doolittle and a uh, congregation called Progressive Baptist Church. Uh, well, Progressive Baptist Church were, uh, they were uh, blessed with uh, laptops uh, for uh, 50 students at that time. Now this was during remote learning. So one of the biggest issues that uh, we knew about was that there was a digital divide that was revealed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And so that particular partnership wanted to answer that need. And they came to Doolittle, did a press conference, and they gave out those laptops to those young people and uh, the smiles on their faces, it, it just spoke volumes of uh, how much a faith partnership is needed. And I wanna thank the Greater Chicago Broadcast Ministries, United Methodist Church actually for partnering with us and allowing this to happen as well as McCormick Theological Seminary, who's also been partnering with us to provide this opportunity for us to have this chance to share more about what me and Alan are trying to build, but also the service that we're trying to give, not only to faith-based communities, but all of our partners and uh, community members around the city. So thank you so much. Well, thank you both for all the work you're doing for all the students in the Chicago Public Schools. I'm Anne-Marie Gerhardt for Different Drummers and the Greater Chicago Broadcast Ministries. Keep the faith.